know, the choir talked about and sung this morning about the importance of surrendering ourselves to the Lord. And for anyone that lives each and every day, you know that that is a challenge to consistently surrender yourself to him. But we need to recognize that everything belongs to him and that we were each created for a greater purpose. We may not know that purpose right now, but we belong to him and we need to recognize that he is our real father. We belong to him. And so coming from out of the 25th Psalm, verses 4 through 5, it tells us, because David wrote this, show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. We need to recognize for you are our God and our Savior. And our hope is in you all the day long. Father, we come to you on bended knee, seated and standing, claiming Father God and knowing, blessed Savior, that you are our God. There is nothing, no one greater than you, Lord. No matter what goes on in our lives, no matter what type of test, no matter what type of troubles, no matter what type of trials we go through, Father, we belong to you, Lord. We need to recognize that each and every day, Father God, because there is someone and something out there that tries to be or thinks that they are greater than you, and they will try to do whatever it takes to take our focus off of you. Hmm. But you are the Almighty. You are the sovereign God. Hmm. You are the one of I am, of I am, of I am, and I am. Hmm. And we need to recognize that this morning. <laughs> that no matter what happens to us, no matter what we go through, no matter who says what, no matter what we see happening, we belong to you and only you. And so we have family members in our church right now that are dealing with health issues, Father. Family members right now, Lord, you know who they are. We don't even have to lift their names because we know that you are there with them every step of the way. But we are called as your children to pray for each and every one of them, Lord, claiming a healing over their bodies. And so we claim it in the name of Jesus right now, Father God, a healing over their bodies. We have family members, Father God, that are traveling and are visiting other churches and other family members, Lord. Please, Father, we provide, we ask for safe havens for their journeys. Allow them to get back home to a home that's intact. Allow them to get back home, Father, in their right mind and away from any type of tragedy or any type of uh, horrible things going on on the road, Father God. Keep them safe, Lord. We have children, Father God, here within our own family that are having to witness other things going on with other children at school, other problems that are happening within their own families, Father God. Lord, we ask that our children continue to bring the light and be the light of Jesus Christ to help those other children who are living in darkness, Father. You have, you have provided for their parents and their families to love you and to know you. Allow them to take that love to their classrooms, Father. Allow them to take that beautiful light of yours 
out there so that other children could see that there is hope in you, Father God, that there is hope in you, Lord. Show us your ways, Lord. Teach us and guide us in your path, Father God. Father, as we continue during the course of this day, Lord, we ask for a special blessing over those who do not know who you are. There are those within our own families who do not recognize who you truly are. They take for granted that just the opening of their eyes each morning is of their doing, but little do they know that is by your grace and by your mercy that you saw fit, that they were able to even open up their eyes and to be within their right mind. Thank you, Father. There are those here at this altar right now who are going through something that they dare not even want to share with their neighbor. But we ask that it be left and shared right here and left right here at this altar, Father God. We don't know what happened when they walk through these doors with that on their heart. But we're asking that when they leave through these doors, that they will have left it here in this place on this day with you, Father God. We love you, Father. We thank you, Father. In more ways than you will ever know, we love you, Father. Father, we pray like you taught the disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, how will it be thy name? Thy kingdom come, thine will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Huh. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. God bless. Go in peace. Jesus in me. Can I say that another way? Do they see Jesus in you when you open your mouth? Can they see the love of Christ in you for them when you open your mouth? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I pray, Lord, it's your words, not my words, Lord. Use me Mold me, Lord. You are the potter. I am the clay, Lord. So let us hear what words you have for us today. Amen. Amen. Guard your mouth. Guard your mouth. Too many times we say things before we think about it. Too many times we say what's on our mind when we had the wrong things on our mind. And too many times we have hurt others by just using our words. We have torn down others just in one sentence. We have turned people away from God just by what we say and what falls out of our mouths. And that's one of the saddest things you can have is that you are a child of the living God. You're a Christian person. You love the Lord, but what comes out your mouth is something completely different. What happens to that person who hears that? That person on the fence who may be saying, I need a relationship with God. 
what should I do? And you talk to them, and things fall out your mouth that is contradictory to what you believe. We must always guard our mouths at all times. We can't just say what we want to say, and I don't care what anyone hears about it, but I'm going to say what I need to say. That's the wrong attitude. The attitude is, I'm going to say what's pleasing to God and what's going to help build the kingdom. Because if you're not doing that, what are you doing? Can they see the Jesus in you? Can they hear the Jesus in you? Do you believe that Jesus is in you? And if the answer is yes, none of those kind of words should fall out of your mouth. You must always guard your tongue. Because as James said, even the big ships, it takes a small rudder to change it. For a horse to put a bridle in the mouth, the horse would go where he wanted to go. A small fire could light up a forest. Look what happened in California, the wildfires had there. I remember there was one wildfire years ago that it was started by a spark of a bulldozer hitting a rock. Started one of the biggest forest fires ever. The smallest part of your body causes the most harm. Just this one tongue can cause so much harm, so much confusion, so much pain, so much division. And it happens a lot of times. But it also can cause some healing. A kind word can help someone in the day. A kind word can help someone deal with some issues. A kind word can show the love of Jesus Christ. We must always be ready to speak kind words. This is why you must guard your mouth. For if you're not going to guard your mouth, here's what's going to happen. How does that happen? <laughs> okay. Amen. Technology at its finest. <clears throat> well, as things go further, we'll get better and better. But anyway, you guard your mouth. Because here's the thing. When you don't guard your mouth, here's what's going to happen. You're going to put yourself in a situation that you're going to say something you're going to regret. And how many of us have done that before? We have said something, something fell out of our mouths, and the minute it fell out, can't take it back, can't hit the rewind button, can't hit pause, and that one sentence can take years of explaining and may follow with years of hurt. Guard your mouth. And this is why James is saying this, is that people have a tendency to say some really cruel and nasty things. Now, I'll give you a person's name. His name is Jimmy Snyder. Jimmy Snyder worked for a CBS um, television. He was making around 600000 a year, and he got fired because he made one sentence. And this is back in the 1980s. Now, you may not know his name, Jimmy Snyder, but you know his name of Jimmy the Greek. He made a comment about why black athletes were better athletes. And he said because back in the slavery days, they took the biggest black male, the biggest black female, they got together, had big children. That's why the black athletes got better. He was fired the next day. The funny thing is, a year later, they asked Barry Bonds the same question. He gave the same exact answer. But he wasn't fired. And you see today what's happening with Colin Kaepernick and Nike and people burning sneakers. I thought about that for a second. I said, I imagine if I told my mom, mom, dad, I'm going to burn my Nikes in protest. (laughs) 
Here's a wind up. Backhand. That was that would not have worked. That not in a million years. But his career was destroyed by just that one sentence. And this is why the Bible tells us we should be slow to speak. This is why the Bible says, think about what you're going to say before you say it. This is why you speak out of love, not anger, not frustration. You speak out of love. For when you're speaking out of love, love comes out. Love does no harm. If you're speaking from Christ, Christ does no harm. It speaks the truth. And sometimes the truth will hurt, but the truth will also heal. So when we speak and we guard our mouths, we're not going to say things that's going to harm the body of Christ. For if we are his feet, if we are his hands, if we're doing his work, should we not be speaking like we are doing that? Should we not be encouraging others? Should we not be lifting each other up? Should we not be saying to each other, hey, I got you. It'll be all right. We're here for you. Instead of saying, well, that's your, only, that's your fault anyway. We must speak in love in all things. And even though your voice is going or it sounds raspy like this one does, speak in love. It doesn't matter how you sound. It matters what's come from the heart. And you speak it from the heart in love and kindness. That does no harm to anyone. But when you speak because you just want to say something, or you just can't wait to hear what's going to fall out of your mouth, that's when trouble starts. Then you say things you regret. Then you say things that you should never say in the first place. But you can't take that back. Once it's gone, it's gone. Because see, Jesus taught us that what goes into the mouth does not defile the person. It's what comes out the mouth that defiles you. That's how you are judged. That's how you are going to be looked at. And if you're going to be judged by what you say, and you're saying the things of what God wants you to say, of lifting one another up, you will never be in trouble. The only way you'll be in trouble is those who don't want to hear the truth. But you say the truth anyway. Don't let what the world says you should do, do. You do what God tells you to do. And the guard is telling you to guard your mouth. So you should be guarding your mouth. And you must be always be lifting up one another in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. Because if you don't do it, who will? Who will, are you going to wait for someone else to give somebody else the good news? No, you give them the good news. Sometimes you don't have to say a word, but sometimes you have to say something. But you always be thinking of a Christ-centered mind. Of thinking of a mind of Christ, of love, of with the Holy Spirit, on what you should say, how you should say it, and when to say it. Sometimes we try to give advice, but no advice is needed. Sometimes we want to say something to help to fix some other things. Don't try to fix things. Let the Holy Spirit fix things. And you just work, let the Holy Spirit work through you. Now in Ephesians 4.29 it says, Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouth, but only such as good for building up, as fit for occasion that may give grace to those who hear. Your mouth is a weapon. Your mouth is a double-edged sword. Your mouth can bring war. Your mouth can bring peace. Your mouth can bring hate. Your mouth can bring love. Your mouth can tear down. Your mouth can encourage. Where do you want your mouth to go today? And that is a question we must face. Where do we want our mouths to go today? Realize the damage that our tongues can cause. But realize the healing 
our tongues can cause. Always be consistent in what you're going to say. Be of a Christ mind. Be of a Christ. Be of good cheer. Be happy. Let the words out your mouth flow as love. Not as hate. Not to tear down. Not to harm. But to build up. Because everyone needs a little building up. So I want everybody on this side to look over here. Tell them you love them. Look back at them. Tell them the same thing. Encouragement. Encourage one another. Encourage our young folks. Especially our young folks. There's a lot of issues that's going on in the world today that they're going to be affected. Encourage your young folks. And before, a lot of times, before you want to respond to something evil, with evil, don't. Sometimes you have to smile and walk away and say, hey, I love you anyway, and walk away. Because evil just brings on all the evil. You fight evil with good. You fight an evil tongue with a holy tongue. Remember, Christ is leading you. And if he's leading you, let him lead. And you fall behind. Don't take it under yourself that you have to say something. Sometimes you have to ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, what do I need to say to this person today? How many of you do it on a daily basis? If we have a conversation, Holy Spirit, what do I need to say today? Because sometimes you won't say a thing, and that's when you don't say a thing. Guard your mouth. And in this way, you will help build up the kingdom of Jesus Christ. And you'll help build up others. Because we don't want to turn people away from the gospel. We want to turn them to the gospel. And we turn them to the gospel by saying the proper things. Speaking of love, speaking of the gospel, speaking of the power of Jesus Christ, speaking of your own testimony, your own life story. And we all have one. And that needs to be shared. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us stand up and open the doors of the church. And if you're found a church home, I invite you now. The doors of the church open.